right, let's start with the basics of cluster configuration, the YAML file. YAML, hmm, I like that word. Sounds like a vegetable. Anyway, moving on. The Cassandra YAML file is the main configuration file for Apache Cassandra and can be found either in slash Etsy slash DSC slash Cassandra if you used a package installer or wherever you install Cassandra. So Cassandra slash resources slash Cassandra slash conf for a tarball installation. There's a bunch of things you can configure in that file and we'll be going over some of the key configuration options in the next few slides. Remember though that you'll have to restart the node for any of these changes to take effect. Okay, so there are some settings that everyone changes. Let's call those quick start settings. So these are the minimal settings to get Cassandra up and running. Alrighty, what's first? Well, the cluster name. If you don't change the cluster name, the default name will be test cluster. You might want to get more creative than that. Next, your listen address. This is the IP address that is used by other nodes in the cluster so that this node can be found. Moving on to native transport address, which is the IP address used by the client to connect to the node and or to the cluster. Finally, the seeds address or addresses. These are the nodes that are contacted when new nodes are joining the cluster. If you have more than one, then it's a list and you need double quotes to enclose that list. Usually, all the nodes in the cluster will have the same seed list. Okay, what's next? Ah yes, where do I find these settings? Well, you can either scan the whole file if you've got time to kill, or you can use the search feature in whatever text editor you fancy. Open the file in a text editor, search for the cluster name, change it, and save the file. Voila, you're golden. Okay, one gotcha. This is all case sensitive, so remember the case you used when you set it. Yep, same thing here. You're gonna search for the listen address, edit the file to change it from the default of localhost, and then save the file. Done. Remember, Either change the address or the interface, not both. Ooh, okay, this is easy. What's next? Now we're cooking with gas. Let's search for native transport address, change it, save it, and forget it. Okay, maybe you don't want to forget it. Anyway. All right, seed addresses. Here we might add a small complication, your double quotes. You guys ready for this? You're going to search for dash seeds and then edit this field. You're going to have to put your seed addresses in double quotes. If you have a list of them, separate it by commas. The seed addresses are critical because new nodes connecting to the cluster will go to one of these seed nodes to get the lay of the land. All right, now that the required configuration settings are, well, you know, configured, you can move on to some other commonly configured settings. I feel like I'm saying configure a lot. Okay, let's start with endpoint snitch. All right, so let's start with endpoint snitch. This is required if you want your cluster to be topology aware. Next is initial token and num tokens. These are gonna come into play if you wanna use virtual nodes, otherwise known as V nodes, to evenly distribute data in your cluster. The next few settings are for directories where we will store information such as commit logs, your actual data, hints, or key and row cache files. And last but not least, some other cool things you can set, enable, or disable in your YAML settings that you should at least know about. If you want to enable hinted handoffs, you flip the switch here in this top setting. It's on by default, so maybe not flipping the switch is necessary. Next on my little list here is max hint window in milliseconds. This is how long hints will be stored for a dead node. Alas, poor node, I knew him well. The default, by the way, is three hours. What's next? It's row cache size in megabits. This is the maximum size of the row cache in memory. It's set to zero by default. File cache size in megabits is next. This is the maximum memory to use when pooling SS table buffers. And finally, memtable heap space in megabits and memtable off heap space in megabits, which is the total on heap and off heap allowance for memtables. All right, I think that's enough configuration for now. Let's go see if you've learned anything by jumping onto an exercise.